We have some an, an outside speaker tonight who's slated to go on at eight o'clock. Um, so um, I just want to, if for those of you who are here for the high school start time item, I just want to sort of apologize in advance that it's not on the agenda until um, so late. We will do it um, sort of with sensitivity to other items as soon as we can, but the transportation consultant can't be here until 8, so we parked it a little later, but we will get to it if sooner if, um, and we can move some of the um, consent items till later. So I just wanted to say that typically we have anything that the public's interested in right up front. Um, so we'll start with our superintendent's report. Great. Good evening, everybody. Um, Hello. A couple things to report. First, uh, so last Tuesday night was our vaping forum at Newton South, and we had an excellent audience and engaged audience. And I just want to recognize the people who participated in the, in the panel. And I uh, was beginning with our keynote speaker, Attorney General Nora Healy, who did a terrific job. You can take a look. Uh, her presentation is on our website, along with the presentations of our panelists. Our moderator, again, uh, she moderated my forum last year, Beth Teichel, and she is one highly skilled moderator. Beth is a reporter for the Boston Globe. And then our panelists, Jonathan Winnikoff, the Mass General, Jody Cohen, who's chair of the Chemical Health Committee at Newton North, a science teacher, so knowledgeable, as well as Brian Dolesky, who's incredibly knowledgeable and skilled as well, who's a prevention and intervention counselor in Newton South. This is an issue that unfortunately is not going away, that we need a long-term strategy for as a district. So on Wednesday, we're having our first meeting of our vaping working group, which is a group of city and school folks. We're going to hear from some students and really figure out what our strategy should be around vaping, both on the prevention side and on the intervention side. Because it's going to take really a whole community uh, to address this issue, so we will communicate more about that. Um, next, I also want to congratulate understanding our differences. Last Thursday night, uh, let's see, the mayor was there, and Diana Matthew welcoming, and everybody, it was a wonderful event, so we congratulate on understanding our differences, as well as their two recipients, uh, Mary Beth McIntyre and Marsha Herman, who have been involved in understanding our differences collectively, I think, for 40, I mean, 40 to 50 years, a really long time. I'm so impressed when I go to those events how the long-standing commitment of the volunteers, you really see it's generations of people, and always we hear wonderful uh, remarks from our students as well, so that was a, a highlight. Thank you, David. Um, so we'll move to public comment now. Um, I think we can get everyone in. Um, we always like to hear from the public. Um, I'll call your name. Please come and speak carefully into the night microphone. You have three minutes. Um, we'll be timing you. Um, please state your name and address first. Um, and just to remind everyone that it's your time to speak and our time to listen. So Jim Epstein, then Sandy Young, and Jerry Tuitt. My name is Jim Epstein. I live in 110 Manchester Road, Newton Highlands. Twice now within the last two months, the Newton Public Schools have seen fit to invite well-known Parkland student David Hogg to speak to the entire student body at school assemblies in order to advance essentially what is part of the political agenda of the left shared by the school administration on the subject of gun control. This all under the justification of school safety. This, of course, stems from the Parkland, Florida school massacre last year. Since there's something important Mr. Hogg failed to mention, which doesn't quite fit that agenda, for the record, I'm going to read and submit a portion of remarks given this past weekend by Parkland dad Andy Pollack at the Republican Jewish Coalition Conference in Las Vegas. Andy stated as follows, quote, I was never political before my daughter was murdered last year at Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. But I'm going to tell you, because so many people ask me, everyone asks me, Andy, how do you do this? Get up there day in, day out to fight for my daughter. And I'm going to tell you why. Still tough for me, it's over a year. I love my daughter, and for my daughter to die in vain, 
I'm just not going to let it happen. So I could have taken the easy path when my daughter was murdered, like a majority of parents, in these un and these unethical politicians in Broward County, and just blamed guns. But I took another path. I put her in that school, my precious, beautiful daughter. How did this happen to her? And I wanted to know why. So it quickly became clear that a multiple of failures came together to create and enable the killer. Brown, Broward County Sheriff, you can guess what party he belongs to, he had politicized his department. His department, if you can believe it or not, went to the killer's house over 40 times without making an arrest, which allowed the killer to be able to pass a background check and purchase a rifle. 40 times they went to his house. We found out that Obama-era leniency policies implemented by left-wing education bureaucrats let the shooter slip through the cracks. And when, what's crazy is, when the families in Broward County recognized this and they wanted accountability, local politicians in Broward County attacked us. Not only me, all the parents for wanting accountability, unquote. That's the end of this quote. I'm here, hereby requesting that Superintendent Fleischman invite Parkland dad, Andy Pollack, to speak at the Newton seconds. Public Schools, coming to the Newton Public Schools to balance the presentation by David Hogg. If the superintendent will let me know, I'll endeavor to make arrangements. And I submit this for the record. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, actually, Sandy Young was next, Jerry. It doesn't matter. You can go, and then she can go. You guys are fine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jerry Tewitt, Hopkinton, Mass. Sadly, the group Education Without Indoctrination has been compelled to sue to stop the ideological teaching in Newton classrooms. The issue is not inadvertent factual mistakes. The errors are significant, intentional, and targeted at specific people, Jews, and a specific nation, Israel. Through a series of misrepresentations documented in the lawsuit, classroom materials question the legitimacy of that nation's existence and its moral underpinning. The existence of no other nation is questioned, and the immorality of Israel's adversaries is virtually ignored. Through those and other distortions, Israel and Israelis are portrayed as militaristic bullies, deaf to please for moderation, paranoid, heartless, greedy, thieves who without cause or provocation steal from the weak and poor. A familiar stereotype. The stereotype used for centuries to justify hatred of Jews. The stereotype now being resurrected in your classrooms with your ascent. In 1954, Gordon Allport, Allport, groundbreaking Harvard psychologist in his book, The Nature of Prejudice, described the five stages, stages of prejudice culminating in genocide. Anti-locution, what we call hate speech, avoidance, discrimination, physical attack, extermination. The Anti-Defamation League diagrammed Allport's five stages into what they call the pyramid of hate. The evidence in the lawsuit show that some Newton classrooms have entered the pyramid. So where in the pyramid are those classrooms? If you think they're on the first step, maybe not. Step one is negative stereotypes, the kind I just discussed. Step two on this pyramid includes ridicule, slurs, bullying, social avoidance. Step three includes political discrimination. Last week, some students spoke to you, right in this room, of political discrimination they experienced in their classes. They were Jews. So this committee has possibly created a classroom environment on the third step of the pyramid of hate. Two steps below genocide. Mayor Fuller, would you like to transfer that environment to your entire city? There were all the members of the committee when do you think it will be time to intervene? Will you wait till your classrooms reach step four, violence? The lawsuit is not a defeat. It is an opportunity to lead. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy Young and then Margo Einstein. <coughs> Hi, my name is Sandy Young, and I live at 18 Karen Road in Wabin. 
as taught in, in AA, the first step in fixing a problem is to admit that you have a problem. There are many in, intelligent people here that show up meeting after meeting, speaking about the anti-Israel bias in the Newton schools. You all choose to not respond and to continue to say the problem doesn't exist. A whole book was written about it called Indoctrinating Our Youth. A copy of this book has been given to each of you, and I can say with almost certainty that none of you have read that book. If you did, the city could not have made a truthful statement when they said there is no evidence of anti-Israel bias in the schools. If and when you do admit that the problem exists, I have some solutions for you. Number one, I have expert guest speakers ready, willing, and able to appear at any Middle Eastern Studies, History, or Current Events class. Number two, I'm willing to fund a large exhibit from the Simon Wiesenthal Center called The Birth of Israel. The cost to rent this exhibit is $500, which I am willing to pay out of my own pocket. Number three, when the city admits a problem exists, Mayors many times appoint residents to volunteer to sit on a commission. How about we have an anti-anti-Israel bias commission? I bet you'd get a lot of volunteers to sit on this commission. I have brought solutions one and two to Mayor Fuller, Assistant Superintendent Toby Romer, both high school principals, history department chairs, and Mr. Badar directly and indirectly. Mr. Romer, Mr. Turner, and Mr. Chow have nicely responded to me. They basically said, thank you for your offers, and we will be in touch. I will continue to wait for someone to take me up on my offers. I end with this. Since you say that you, you cannot respond or you do not respond, will, at least, will you at least raise your hands to show me that you've heard what I've said? Will you raise your hands? Wow. Does that mean that wow. you didn't hear what I said? I don't get it. You're not raising your hands. So you haven't heard me. So if wow. you're telling me for the record, please go. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Marco Einstein, and then Valerie Davison, and Christina McMahon. <clears throat> Thanks. Marco Einstein, 63 Bardeen Road, Newton Center. Mayor Fuller, before you were elected, you said that you agreed to transparency. Transparency of the school curriculum. You said it orally. And you said it in print. It's in the Newton tab. And yet you voted publicly not to have the Newton School curricula transparent. This is against the law. There are two laws. in the mass public records. And anybody that wants further elucidation of exactly what they are, the names and so on, school committee. 
Um, I didn't have to get to come to the last school committee meeting and a little name and address. Name and address Janet. Oh, Janet Sturman, 120 Church Street. Got it? Um, I didn't get to come to the last school committee meeting, but I did watch it on TV, on new TV, I don't know, like a week after it was done. And I have to say that the jig is up. We actually had kids from Newton South come and testify about the anti-Semitic things that are being taught in their classrooms. I was like, wide, mouth wide open when I watched it. I mean, you can come here and say you categorically deny all these charges, but the kids came and testified. I mean, seriously. I don't know. So I think there are more kids. I think there's a lot of intimidation for the kids because they don't want to speak out against the teachers because they want to get um, you know, their, letter, their letters of recommendation signed so they go to colleges. But besides that, you know, I'm glad there are some kids that were brave enough to come and speak to you guys. Um, actually, I'm talking, I was actually going to talk to you about one thing that last June, um, the, a, um, the ADL and the JCRC sent a letter to Dr. Fleischman. Is that right, Dr. Fleischman? And about the uh, Middle Eastern Committee uh, State Program. And it was a very lengthy, detailed letter. And some letters went back and forth. So the ADL wrote a letter, and then you wrote a response, and they said, oh, thank you so much for your response. But what you said in your response is that we are coming up, we're devising a guidelines for inviting people to come and speak. And you're going to present it at, at, to the 2018-2019 school year. Has that been done? If it hasn't, I'd like to see it. Maybe, like the students said last the last school committee meeting, maybe you can write that down as something to do. Because it's something that you committed to the JCRC and the ADL last year. Um, the second thing about, you know, the last thing I have to say is I am horrified that not one person here who each of you have individually, personally met, not all of you, Sandy Young, who had the nerve to come up and offer you a solution to a problem and not one person was willing to just lift up their hand and say, I heard you. 30 seconds. If, you should be embarrassed. That's all. I'm horrified for you. So thank you for your time. I'm sure you didn't hear me. Just like you didn't hear Sandy, but thank you. Thank you.